welcome to this week's piece. So this is just a hutch top that was sitting outside someone's house. They tend to pop up really frequently because people just want the bases of them. Hutches are a little bit outdated. So they take them off and then set them on the curb essentially. So I picked this one up. It was quite a bit larger than what I had anticipated. So it sat for a while until I figured out exactly what I was gonna do with it. So the left side of the door, as you saw, was already taken apart. I'm not sure what happened, but all of these little bits were already taken out. So you could see quite a bit of glue and everything over there. So I knew that this side could come off. And so I just used whatever tools I could to kind of get in there, break it, break it up. And then once I got this first piece kind of gone, it went much, much faster. It was just getting that first piece out that was really, really difficult. And then after that was out, I could just kind of slide it up under and get everything else out. Now once I got those finished, I kind of looked it over and there's quite a bit of a glue mess going on. There's the same thing on the other side, however they just painted over it in the black color. So um, I'm going to smooth it out a little bit, not too much because I'm not terribly worried about it as I'm going to be throwing some wallpaper on over these. And then I'm just going to hit the entire piece with some wood filler wherever I need it. There was a couple holes at the bottom where it would have been screwed into the top of the you know, the lower part of the hutch. Um, and then a couple plugs were missing and I wasn't too terribly worried about those. I refilled some with other plugs and then other parts of it, I just did more filler, so. And then I just made sure that both sides matched so that it wasn't lopsided, if that makes any sense. And I let that fully dry and then I could go in and scuff sand the entire piece and get it prepped for painting. I will just go ahead and give the piece a really good clean. It's got a bunch of sanding dust as well as some dust from some other sanding projects. So it definitely needs a good clean, but it's not grimy, so I don't need anything too heavy. So my chalk mount cleaner, I just really like using this because it smells delightful. All right, it's really easy to take the backs off of these. They're typically done in either staples, which this one was, or small pin nails. And then I just go around and remove all of the, in this case it was staples, remove them all out so that I can put new things in when I go to reattach it. I like to wallpaper the back of these or decoupage them or do something if I'm going to do a simple paint finish. But since I already have the two wallpaper panels on the front, I'm going to do a more simple paint finish on this. So I've got deep water gray and light khaki and I mix them to just get a slightly lighter version. And I'm going to make this solid that color and then I will be able to get some stamping on there. So it kind of matches the front panels but it's not too matchy matchy if that makes any sense. And then since we have the back of this off, it makes it so, so much easier to paint. You can get all around the edges and then I'll start on the back side. And then once I'm finished doing my first coat on the back side, I will do my second coat around the front side. And that way I can just make sure that I have not missed any spots anywhere. And it's just so easy this way. You can get up and down and all around and you know, all the things. Now that the stain is dry on top, I can go through and just seal it. I like to seal the stain in or my tops in one before I start painting. That way, if I get any paint on it, I can just wipe it back because the polyax is a barrier and I can just easily wipe back any paint that happens to go on it. Now 
Applying this wallpaper is so easy because it's really thick, it's repositionable. This is a pre-pasted wallpaper, so you can, I, I've never just gotten it wet and put it on. I always use my satin poly to apply it, but if you could potentially just get it wet and put it on, I'm sure that's fine. I just like to know that my piece is going to stay put together and I'm not going to have any lifting issues or anything later on. So that's just one measure that I like to take. You could also use wallpaper adhesive. Just whatever you have and you feel comfortable decoupaging with, I'm sure it would work for this wallpaper. This is also a wipeable wallpaper, so that's why I'm comfortable putting it in before I do my paint job because it's the same as putting the poly on the stain on top. It's going to be protected, so if I get a little paint on it, I'm not too worried about it. I can just wipe it back. And here I just make fold lines and everything to get it fit in. And then I will use a straight blade to cut it along. I'll usually use a square, some type of ruler to run my blade along to make sure I get straight lines. But I'm just measuring it out and putting it in. When I add my poly, I do use a generous amount. And I'm not too terribly worried about getting a smooth application. I just want to make sure I have a little extra around the edges and in the corners so that I have no lifting edges later on. And occasionally I will just throw some on the back of my wallpaper. It's just added peace of mind. I'm sure it's not necessary but it makes me feel good so I do it. And I'm never worried about this stuff tearing. It's so, so easy to put on. Like I said, it's repositionable if you get it right away before the poly sets up. But it just goes on so easily. Use your hands, smooth it out. You could use even one of the little scrapers if you needed to to kind of squish everything out. It's just, it's super, super durable. I will have it linked below. The last time I linked this, it was, it ended up selling out. But they do have this print in just several different colors. And finally, my backer board dried enough so that I could start stamping. I just want to make sure this is done because I have to paint it, wait for it to dry, do the stamps, wait for those to dry, and then poly, and then wait for that to dry before I can put the back back on the hutch top. So um, I kind of work back and forth when I'm doing both of these. But these are just the, I believe these ones are the IOD stamps, and they're just the coolest floral. I love them. They are amazing and it's doing kind of a solid color monochrome type theme so that it doesn't take away from the wallpaper which has color and everything in it so it's still roses it's still floral it still kind of matches like that but it's not too much or too crazy and I really only want this to kind of be behind the two little cubby sections, behind the shelf parts. I don't care if they're inside the cabinets and I don't want it along the bottom. I just kind of want it to be in like that little peekaboo spot on the two shelves. So that's kind of where I'm trying to place these. And I don't have it measured out, but I can kind of see where the old paint job was versus raw wood through that paint in a certain light. <laughs> so that's what I'm looking at when I'm adding these in. Now that I'm waiting for the flowers to dry, I'm going to finish up my first coat on the main part of the piece and now I'm going to go in with just a tiny detail brush and clean up the edges around where the wallpaper is. Again, if I get any on there, I'm not too worried about it, but it's just nicer not to have to clean it up later. So a little detail brush goes a long way. Now back to the backer board, I'm just going in with the satin poly and I'm sealing up the entire thing. Now from my wallpaper I took inspiration and then it's not perfect. If it was perfect it would just be shades of gray with some cream. But I am going a little bit blue toned and the wallpaper is pretty forgiving in that so I can kind of mix in a couple other colors if I want to. And generally when I do these messy kind of mottled blends I'm not worried about anything too, too much. It's just kind of looking, throwing colors on there 
If you don't like it, you can paint over it, but I typically want to do kind of darker around the edges and lighter throughout the middle. The base is typically darker than the top is, and those are just kind of my tried and true things. But again, you do whatever you like and it usually works out. So, you know, there's that. But anyways, I'll just go on, throw a few colors on with their brushes. Each color has its own brush. And then I'll use this small blending brush to blend them all together. And as you can see, I'm not worried about mixing anything. I go from the light into the dark and everything and I'll clean off my brush if I'm getting too much muddying in, in each color. But for the most part, I kind of just let the brush transition as it goes into all of the other colors. And then I keep a rag on hand and obviously my water and I just do what feels right and what looks right and it's all by feel. So this is a really, really easy, easy blend because it's not perfect. It's not supposed to be, but it is really seamless. So I, I kind of like that part about it. And usually when I'm blending in these wallpapers, I will do the colors exactly next to the colors on the wallpaper. But in this case, I didn't. I just kind of let my imagination go and do, I did colors wherever I wanted to put them. I didn't so much worry about the wallpaper. I just took inspiration from it and then blended around it. So I do want to mention while blending the side, it's a little harder than the fronts. The fronts are very small areas of blends and they just, it's so fast and easy and it, it's like a dream. But when you get to these larger areas, they too take a little bit more time. So that's just something to keep in mind. You're not doing it wrong. It just does take longer when you're working in these larger areas. So if there's a shade that I need a little bit more of, I'll add more there and I kind of go back and forth and it will look like a crazy, crazy mottled mess. And I'm like, oh, this is terrible. But you keep at it and then you're like, oh, okay, I just needed to work a little bit further. And I do want to say as you're blending out these colors with the blending out brush, essentially, you are going so, so gently with this. You do not want to apply a lot of pressure because the softer you go with it, the more smooth transition you'll get with your blends. So just remember that, you know, like Bob Ross says, two hairs and some air, we're, we're doing that here. Uh, and you guys know that I cannot stand paint, but because I was scrubbing so hard with the brushes, getting these to blend around the edges, I just didn't want to have to deal with cleaning all of that up and reactivating my poly because it hadn't dried as it hadn't dried long enough to be fully cured. It was only overnight and I knew that if I kept getting it wet that it would just, I didn't want to mess. So uh, I taped. So here is the color that I had mixed up. It's a almost silvery pearl type. It's, it's lovely. But so I use this with my metallic pearl color. I'll add in a little bit of the silver glazing dust and some poly. So anywhere I put this, it will essentially seal the piece. Um, and then also give it just the most luxurious sheen. It's lovely. Now I don't like to brush these on with like a smooth synthetic brush because no matter what you can see brush strokes. I do like to go back and forth and swirls and it just, oh, it adds the most wonderful texture and it's just so, so pretty. And then once I get all that done, I'm going to go in with regular poly and I will seal this entire piece with just regular satin poly. It's my Chalk Mountain stuff. It's the only stuff that I use. It's also awesome.
And once that's dry, obviously the backing's dry because it's been getting done in the midst of everything, I can reattach that and kind of see where everything lies. And it just finally starts coming together here and it's so much fun. I'm just going to attach this with some pin nails with my airstrike. And then of course I can throw on some hardware. These are just little bits that I had lying around in the shop from previous projects. I keep all of my hardware. I wasn't a big fan of just the silver knobs on here so these are just a little more dainty and they make me happier. Oh hi, Taryn here with Elegant Upgrades and we've got this week's finished piece. So these ones are really fun. They always sell really quickly for me. They're just the little hutch tops. A lot of times people just take them off. Sorry about the noise. And it's kind of just on the street. If you're looking and you see one of these, pick it up because they're inexpensive, free, next to nothing, somewhere in that realm.